Vorrei un caffè americano. I'm reading, uh, this is called Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry. It's, uh, it's a great one. It's, it's 20th century. It says here in the Los Angeles Times, Lowry's masterpiece has a claim to being regarded as one of the 10 most consequential works of fiction produced in the 20th century. And it's, I mean, it's amazing. So this guy here, from, he studied at Cambridge, an Englishman, and then he lived all over the world, in LA and in Italy and in, Canada and Mexico and the book is set in Mexico and it's it's all about heartbreak really I mean it's it's about a man drinking himself to death uh, because his heart is broken and it's a very cinematic book you know so for for those of us that love cinema it's a lot of the ways in which the scenes cut or that images are sort of pasted into the text it's amazing often posters or signs you'll you know, so we'll be, we'll be sitting here and we're just having a chat. And then right into the middle of the text, it'll just say, tonight I'll be eating a perfect 10, you know, like this Uber Eats ad that's up there. And so it gives you a feeling of being in the town in the same way as when you, you're seeing a shot, like Tarantino does this very well, or uh, Fellini does this well as well. And when we're getting the scene, we're getting a, a sense of a place and we just cut to a poster of the time. Like for instance, in Inglorious Bastards is a good example of that. You know, you see that a lot in, in that film with posters and the stuff outside the cinema or the theater. Um, so that, that's what I've liked about this book a lot. So one thing that they say is very useful. I mean, I've always read ever since I was a kid and I've always loved films ever since I was a kid, but one thing that they say is very useful, both say like Uta Hagen, you know, she mentions this in her book. And for instance, I don't know if you saw the film Beanpole two years ago, the Russian film. Uh, I think his name is Kantemir Balagov, something along those lines. It might not be quite correct. But both of these people, they both talk about how important it is to read fiction. So I've always read fiction anyway, but what I've noticed is that by reading fiction, obviously trains the empathetic bone, which is essential for an actor to be placing yourself in different shoes and into different situations that you might not normally consider yourself a part of. And the other thing that it helps very much with reading fiction, I think, is that when you're used to reading screenplays and, and plays and, and texts that are going to be brought to life or that you're going to try to bring to life uh, on stage or on camera, what's very useful about reading fiction is all of a sudden you're reading something that doesn't have that uh, rubric to it. So there's a certain, even in the greatest script or in the greatest play, there's a certain, there has to be a certain skeletal nature to a script or to a play because a lot has to be left to the director and to the performers. And when you're reading fiction, you're getting everything at once. Uh, you're, you're, you're not, you're getting something that's a much fuller work and a much fuller body. And so if you're, if you're in the habit of reading a lot of scripts and plays and training that side of the mind and, and putting yourself into those positions is very useful to have fiction on the other side. You don't have to consider these sort of skeletal details of it. And here's a beautiful woman sitting at her computer working hard. A nice cup of black tea, nothing like it in the morning. Nice wee English breakfast to get the day started. Uh, could I have two of the spanaka, how do you say it? Spanak ko pitake? Yeah, two of those. The minis, yeah, thank you very much. I'm from Italy. Yeah. Oh, you're Italian too? Did you say? Huh? Which part? Oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, and where were you born? There or here? Here. Here, okay. And are your parents are from there? Oh, that's great. Okay. So that's a nice mix. Italy and Korea. Very cool. No receipt? Uh, no receipt. No, thank you. Okay. Kijun is from Korea, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> These ones are excellent. These are the little white ones that I had earlier. And then if you like Nutella, which I love Nutella, I can't resist Nutella, actually. Those are excellent as well. You see the shells with the little Nutella on top of them. A lot of great Greek products. Yeah, very good Greek honey. This is like nougat over here. Olive oil. 
Greek olive oil is excellent too. It's not better than Italian, not quite, but pretty good still, you know. The Italian is the best of the best, I would say, you know. This is the spinach and feta I was talking about. Fantastic. Mm. Squisito. Absolutamente squisito. I speak four languages fluently. A little bit of French. Fluently, I speak English, Italian, German, and Spanish. French, I'm still working on it. No Greek, though, unfortunately. So, man, what is it? What are we gonna do with the, with what we shot today? Like, what's the name of the channel, and what what are your plans? Image, image, image. So it's gonna be like a YouTube channel or something like that. That's great, man. And and where is this? Is this which episode number is this? The first man. I'm honored, dude. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. That's very good, man. It's called Image, Image, Image. Image, Image, Image. So that's Image, Image, Image. Coming at you now. Tune in. Tune in on YouTube. Imagine. Imagine. So if you were doing it three times, it might become complicated. Imagine, imagine, imagine. It's easier in English. Image, Image, Image. In English, it's coming from the Latin. Imagine. Image, Image, Image. Uh, imagen. So Imagen, Imagen, Imagen. But in German, it would be Bild. Bild, Bild, Bild. Or Figua, Figua, Figua. You know? Uh, so your figure, which makes sense from an artistic perspective that you're talking about figure. And built is, a built can be many things. So a built can be a painting or something that you see in a gallery, a built like that. 